Capitol Hill, the grand center of all the legislation and all the great uh, laws that are passed here in the United States of America. Great history here, great architecture. And we are here to interview and talk to Congressman Andre Castle. Uh, he's a young man. His significance for the Muslims of America is that he's the second Muslim congressman in the House. Uh, we, of course, have interviewed and talked to Congressman Keith Ellison, who's a veteran of the project. We very much look forward to Congressman Carson. I haven't met him before, so I am looking forward and asking him lots of interesting questions. This is our country. There's room enough here for science to live, and there's room enough here for religion to forgive and try to understand all the people of this land. This is our country. What was your own uh, conversion to Islam? How, what prompted you? Well, uh, th there were a few things. I grew up in a, in a community. I was raised a Baptist. I uh, spent seven years in a Catholic school. Uh, I was an altar boy for several years. Uh, had serious thoughts about becoming a priest until puberty hit. During those times, I had deep discussions with the priests uh, at uh, St. Rita, and they always encouraged me to study different faiths, different religions. Uh, and so that led me to study uh, Rumi. And at the time, I, I, as a teenager, I was uh, into hip-hop. I was a rapper. Hip-hop and the poetry of Rumi really motivated me. And uh, you had so many groups, the Five Percenters, the NOI, during this time, so I was wanting to learn more about Islam. And I read the Quran, I said, this is for me. Uh, in my neighborhood, uh, during that time, it was the height of the crack cocaine epidemic. And so you had Muslims policing the neighborhoods, pushing out drug dealers, and I was greatly influenced by that. So I wanted to see that, I wanted to attach myself to that kind of pride, the kind of affirmation that I saw in them, especially being a young African-American male searching uh, for an identity. And so I, 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 I associated myself with, with Muslims because I saw the kind of firepower that Islam brought to them intellectually as well as spiritually. I'm a very proud American. Uh, most importantly, I'm a proud Hoosier. And more important than that, I'm a proud Muslim. Uh, and so, um, you can be a proud American and a proud Muslim at the same time. And you know, as American, I'm very patriotic. Uh, as a Hoosier, uh, I have great pride in the great state of Indiana, uh, the great city of Indianapolis. And through that, being a member of Congress, I have to first look at the concerns of my district. Last year, over 100,000 uh, Hoosiers lost their jobs. Millions of Americans, mi millions of Americans lost their jobs. So America is suffering right now. As an American, as a member of Congress, I have a duty to be an advocate for not only my constituents, but for Americans who are suffering. When I ran, there were some concerns about my faith. But at the end of the day, most people wanted to know, what are you going to do about our broken educational system? What are you going to do about our troops in Iraq? What are you going to do about improving our economy? The religion, I hear you're a Muslim, you're a Muslim, okay, whatever. What are you going to do, sir? And uh, we're working hard every day for them, and they're proud of that fact. And it has humanized Muslims in a way uh, that uh, is so, so necessary. Myself and Congressman Ellison up here fighting the good fight. But at the end of the day, people say, hey, these guys are patriotic Americans, and they love America, and they're Muslim. I think America is the place of possibility and a, 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 a leader, I think, in terms of opening this dialogue about race, religion, and social ideals. I'm proud of, of what was done with the work that was done by our founding fathers. Though they were not perfect, we know this. You know, you have so many greats. You can start with George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Dwight Eisenhower, Frederick Douglass, Malcolm X, Dr. King, Sojourner Truth, JFK. So many great leaders who were birthed uh, from the womb of this great country, the United States of America, the true land of opportunity. And now we see uh, the first African-American president, Barack Obama, who not only embodies what is great about America, but he embodies the hopes and aspirations of immigrant brothers and sisters, of African-Americans, of Caucasian brothers and sisters, 
he's such a universal and transformation, uh, transformational figure uh, 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 that he's been able to bring people together. The greatest threat, uh, I can't single it down to one thing. I mean, certainly we still have uh, uh, the poison of racism lurking. We have terrorism. We have national security threats that must be addressed. Uh, we have uh, an economic downturn. And as a result of this economic downturn, crime has gone up uh, significantly, especially in my district. So there are many things, but I think at the end of the day, we need to unite as Americans across racial divides, across religious divides, across social divides, and address the issues that affect all of us. We need to become uh, more responsible for not allowing a certain segment uh, to put out our identity and shape our identity and say this is what Islam is, because it's not. Islam is eclectic. I mean, the way Muslims practice the religion in Indonesia is different from the way they practice it in Saudi Arabia. So we have to highlight our differences, but we have to take control of our own identity. And I think non-Muslims are watching. They're watching very closely. When they see you come in the room and you speak, they say, wow, it's helping that effort. When they see uh, other Muslims across the world, you know, Muhammad Ali did a great deal for Muslims. Uh, Brother Muhammad Yunus and his microfinancing does a great deal for Muslims. You know, it's going to take the work of everyone. And most importantly, I think, once we really get Muslim women out there to the forefront, I think, I think we'll see a lot of great changes in our society because Muslim women uh, will, I think, help lead this effort in changing the perception of Muslims and building bridges between Muslims and non-Muslims. I would simply say um, uh, Muslims are a part of uh, the American fabric. Muslims love America. Muslims want to see America uh, grow and improve in the areas of race, uh, sexism, a great deal of homophobia that's unaddressed. Uh, and Muslims want to make great contributions to our economic condition, uh, our educational system. Uh, my wife's an educator, and there are many Muslims. My wife is, is, is an award-winning teacher. She won the Milken Family Foundation Award. Uh, more Muslim educators out in the forefront helping uh, change our children's minds and make the next Barack Obamas. I would just like to commend the good doctor for his, for his wonderful work in helping to change the mindset of not only Americans but citizens of the world. This is a very important effort because you know many of our ills in society come about as a result of ignorance. And what the good doctor is doing is helping to break down those walls and those barriers of ignorance and bringing us into a new understanding and a new enlightenment. I think we're probably entering into a, a, in an era of, 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 of enlightenment, the new enlightenment, the third enlightenment, the fourth enlightenment. Take your pick. But the good doctor is doing a wonderful and marvelous work, and I commend him for his visionary approach into changing the minds of not only Americans, but of brothers and sisters of all nationalities and races across the world. So thank you. This is our